of Nautica. Ah! Ah! And I'm gonna hatch every single egg in the game. Sounds easy, but I only have five hours to hatch them. Because if I don't, I'll have to use my mother's credit card to give away 10 tubs of G Fuel, the sponsor of this video. For those of you that don't know, G Fuel is an energy formula that empowers gamers through positive vibes and caffeine. And with the wide selection of flavors and formulas that the company has to offer, I can confidently say that there's definitely a product for you. There's the signature energy tubs featuring their sugar-free caffeine-based formula that will keep you feeling energized without sugar crashing later in the day. Not to mention the formula is also packed with vitamins while still tasting amazing. But if you're a real caffeine fiend like me, then you should try G Fuel's energy cans, which have 300 milligrams of caffeine while still having zero sugar and zero calories. But G Fuel isn't just about caffeine. They also have hydration tubs, which are just as tasty as the energy tubs, but without the sugar, caffeine, or any of the calories. Now you might be asking yourself, Mono, this is the most amazing product ever. It must cost like a gazillion dollars, right? Wrong. A tub of G Fuel, which makes around 40 servings, costs only $35.99, which is way cheaper than what you would normally spend on energy drinks. And if you use code MONO at the checkout, you could get 20% off of your entire purchase. But you'll have to act quickly, because the second G Fuel realizes I hacked into their mainframe, they're gonna disable the code and put a bounty on my head. So use the link below and buy while you still can. Anyways, on to the egg hatching shenanigans. After waking up from my head trauma coma, I started the timer and dove straight into the sea, grabbing any resource I could get my hands on, and even finding the eggs for the crash fish and rabbit ray. However, we can't start hatching these just yet. We'll first need the blueprint for the alien containment unit, which can be found deep within the Grand Reef biome. But if we want to reach that area, there's a couple hurdles we need to get over. First off, our character has the lung capacity of a middle school vape addict, so I fixed that by building a better oxygen tank. Next problem we face is that our character swims at the speed of a lobotomized goldfish. And to fix that one, we need the blueprint and resources to build a sea glide. So I went out on another resource run where I got everything I needed, plus the egg for the underwater gas hippo. Now that the sea glide is crafted, we need a vehicle to reached the depths of the Grand Reef, so I went out to the grassy plateaus and scanned parts for the sea moth. But our fabricator back at the life pod is actually too small to craft our new blueprint. And since our character can't craft it himself, there's only one clear solution for this problem. Robot child slaves. And to get them, we'll need to go to the kelp forest. What we're specifically looking for is the mobile vehicle bay. Not only will it allow us to make our sea moth, but we'll also need it to craft another vehicle for the challenge. More on that later though, I scanned the parts, snagged the stalker egg, and made my way back home where I crafted the newly acquired blueprints. Now that we have the sea moth, we could travel up to 200 feet deep before we start capsizing. But the Grand Reef biome is about 400 feet deep. So we'll need to get the sea moth debt module unless we want to end up like a bunch of brain dead billionaires. Lucky for us, we don't even have to craft it. There's actually one conveniently sitting inside the Aurora waiting to be grabbed like the empty water bottles in your room. But in order to access some of the rooms of the Aurora, we need to craft a laser cutter. I already found the blueprint for it when I was at the grassy plateaus, which means all we need to do to craft one is acquire some diamonds. Now normally I just buy them from an Indian man at a mall kiosk, but my broke ass can't even afford a grocery trip to the dollar store right now. So we'll have to acquire some diamonds by cracking open a bunch of shale out crops. Now they can be found in many of the biomes of the game, but I want to search for them inside the jelly shroom biome because one, it's my favorite biome of the game, and two, there's another egg I need to get my filthy Filipino hands on. So I hopped in the sea moth and began searching for the biome. Turns out the entrance is more hidden than the children in my basement. I did end up finding the spadefish egg, but not a single shell out crop. The clock was ticking and we needed to make some progress soon. So I gave up on finding the jelly shroom caves and made a trip to the mountain biome. The surface caves here are even better for shell out crops since they're more densely packed than a blunt roll for Snoop Dogg. And after filling up my inventory, I went back to the life pod, crafted laser cutter, and realized that I'm actually the smallest brain individual in the entirety of Subnautica history. Even though I had the tools to explore the Aurora, I can't even act access it yet because it needs to blow up first. But that's okay because the ship should have its off-brand Chernobyl meltdown in about five minutes. How do I know this? Well, who do you think planted the pipe bomb? Since we're gonna have to wait around for it anyways, I decided to make a quick trip to the floating islands to get the blueprint for the multi-purpose room. Mainly because it's necessary to build an alien containment unit, but we'll also need space for farming and crafting. We still have a little time left to spare, so I decided to dive into the Grand Reef, which is directly below us. We won't be able to fully explore the reef, but by taking the sea moth as deep as it could go, we can start looking around for any useful blueprints that might be in the area. Wait a minute. In front of us was the base not only containing the alien containment unit, but another egg that we needed to hatch. With little to lose, I scoured the insides, grabbed everything we needed, and made it back to the sea moth with some oxygen to spare. Now that we have the alien aquarium, let's go build a base. Now this is gonna take a minute since this game requires you to have half an inventory of titanium to build anything. But once I had the base set up and the alien containment units built, I dropped off the eggs and started the hatching process. We can't rest just yet. There's still many eggs that we need to kidnap and raise, and most 
of them are going to be found much deeper in the game. The only way we'll be able to reach those crushing depths is by building a prawn suit, which meant it was finally time to visit the Aurora. I arrived at the shipwreck, did some parkour, raided the pantry like the fat ass American I am, and acquired the blueprint for our wish.com Iron Man suit. But while we're out, let's go take care of a couple more errands. I stopped by the mushroom forest where I acquired the moon pool blueprint, which will allow us to charge and park our vehicles at the base. Then I searched around and found the gray egg for the bone shark and a blue egg for the... Next up, I visited the Bulb Zone. After finding the Ampial Egg here, I started to explore the shipwrecks where I got the blueprint for the modification station and vehicle upgrade console. I went back to base to depot materials, but I also took this time to incubate eggs and build the blueprints we just got. But I didn't start building the prawn suit just yet since it won't be a viable vehicle until we get the drill and grapple arm blueprints. So I started making my way to the floating islands since we can usually find them at the shipwreck located here. And I say usually because I was only able to find the grapple arm this time, which is good since it'll allow us to move around in the prawn suit faster, but we still need the drill arm to farm kyanite, a material needed to reach the last egg we need to hatch. So to get this blueprint, we're going to need to continue our search in one of the most dangerous biomes of the game, the dunes. For those that don't know, this area is filled with more reaper leviathans than my personal record is filled with felonies. And since my seamoth offers as much protection as a paper mache bomb shelter, we're going to need to be quick and careful when roaming this biome. <laughs> After escaping from the reaper leviathans death snuggle, I managed to find one of the dune shipwrecks. And inside of it was the arm fragments that we needed. I rushed home and began building the prawn suit where I realized that we need more diamonds. But that's okay because this gives us an excuse to search around for the jelly shroom caves again since we still need to find the egg native to that area. And unlike last time, this search proved to be successful. I swam down the hole, snagged a crab snake egg from the jelly shroom coochie pit, and harvested shale outcrops till I got the diamonds we needed. And now that we have our decked out prawn suit, it's time to go egg snatching once again. The next egg can be found deep within the Lost River, a cave system that only has about four entrances, one of the closest being the blood kelp zone next to the underwater islands. So I started swinging my way to the Mountain Dew Valley. I explored deep within the cave system, avoiding any unnecessary confrontation and harvesting materials we would need later. And after 10 minutes of searching, I finally found the Mesmer Egg. Then I continued to swing through the cave and ended up exiting through the Grand Reef, where I grabbed the egg for the Crab Squid, leaving us with only two more eggs left to hatch. Oh my god. So the Warpers and Crab Squids are not very happy about me kidnapping another child. But if you've been watching me for a while, you should know that I happen to have the perfect plan in a situation like this. A technique unmatched by any man, beast, or machine that I've used this move against, running away like a little bitch. I ended up escaping, but the prawn suit was juiced out, and our character was just one mod away from dabbing up Steve Irwin. So I went back to base to rest up for the journey ahead. The next biome we need to explore is the inactive lava zone, and we need to be fully prepared since this area is home to the sea dragon leviathans. These giant crocodile squids come equipped with pointy teeth and sharp claws that can easily destroy our prawn suit. And to make things worse, these guys can defy the laws of water physics and shoot fireballs out of their mouth. And anything that could defy logic like that should be feared like a triggered woman with a Twitter account. When I arrived at the lava zone, I noticed something strange. The sea dragons haven't come out to cause chaos just yet. I took this golden opportunity to farm kyanite, one of the last materials we'll need to harvest this playthrough. Ah! After getting backhanded by the sea dragon, I quickly patched up the prawn suit and ran away like a little bitch, strategically retreating to the caves at the center of the biome, which is great because I was able to search around and get the lava lizard egg. And since I ended up getting all the kyanite we needed, we can leave the area and make our way back to base. But instead of trying to outrun hungry leviathans, we could fast travel to the surface using this alien facility. You see, by farming some Minecraft ember blocks inside the facility, you can use them to power a portal that takes you straight to the mountain caves. And all you have to deal with are the side effects, which include headaches, insomnia, diarrhea, loss of hair, decrease in height, crippling depression, cancer, heroin overdose, false pregnancy, cancer too, and vivid hallucinations. But that's okay, because this is me we're talking about. I'm already too mentally messed up to feel any of these symptoms. Anyways, I started the incubation of the lava lizard egg and upgraded the prawn suit depth module, allowing us to reach the deepest depths of the game. Okay, maybe I am teleporting a little too much. Now, the Sea Emperor Leviathan eggs must be hatched in a special way since they're too large to fit in an alien containment unit, like your mother. To hatch these eggs, we'll need a vial of white liquid called hatching enzymes. And to make these enzymes, we're gonna need a bottle of lotion and a Vogue magazine. I'm kidding! I'm more of a National Geographic type of guy. But to craft these, we'll need to collect five very specific plant samples all spread out across the ocean. Acquiring these samples may seem like an impossible feat since I have less than an hour to gather them all. But don't worry, it's all been calculated. Inside the egg hatching facility are more portals and each of them leads us to a plant sample that we need to craft the McDonald's special sauce. And once I acquired all the materials, 
materials and crafted the mystery mayonnaise, I swung back to the facility and used the sauce to hatch the last eggs of the game, beating the challenge in 4 hours, 27 minutes, and 39 seconds. Which means I don't have to destroy my mother's credit by buying 10 tubs of G Fuel. But to celebrate our success, I'll be doing a smaller giveaway of 3 G Fuel starter packs, which comes with your very own G Fuel shaker cup and 7 flavor sample packets. To enter the giveaway, make sure you're subscribed and follow the directions in the description. And if you really enjoyed the video, click this video right here where you can watch me kill every single fish in Subnautica. Anyways, have a great day.